Hello there, and welcome to Conversations. Today, our guest is Melanie. Melanie, hi. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Dawn. Yes, I'm so excited to talk to you. I have had other episodes talk kind of touching around this, but I haven't really focused in. So you are an energy alchemist. Yes. Okay. And you do other stuff too. Yeah. Reiki master, life coach, energy healer. When did you discover energy? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm one of those people that have spoken with spirit literally my entire life. I grew up walking to school with my spirit guides, having conversations, not understanding why I was the weird kid, because I thought everyone experienced life in that way. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was 16, I started doing tarot readings for my friends. And that's when it kind of came to the the surface that, you know, Melanie, not everyone lives this way, right? (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) I did not know that. So energy definitely has been a huge part of my entire life. Um, the whole chakra stuff that we're going to talk about today didn't come in into my thirties when I took my first Reiki class. Okay. So as you were, um, educating yourself on topics, your gifts became like more powerful or you just started. Yes. I would say definitely more powerful and I understood them more. I understood what they were. And just like with anyone having any gift, whether that's, you know, singing, whether that's writing, whether that's painting, as you do it more and as you explore it more, you shift into different directions, right? And so it just kind of expands your repertoire. Yeah. Is this something that runs in your family? Did you find out, like, was your grandma a psychic Um, or... So my grandma, no, not that I know of, but one time my mother and I went to a psychic fair and we ran into her cousins. We don't have a close knit family. Um, And when my mom's like, oh, what are you guys doing here? They're like, we're psychic. (laughs) And she's like, oh my God, we are too. (laughs) So I don't know if it's so much that it doesn't run in the family or we don't speak about it in the family. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing too, that I was just thinking is because- it seems really open now, like like you see yes. it all the time, but I don't know if that's now my is. algorithm because I I am always delving into stuff like that. I don't believe I have gifts like that, or at least I don't have spirits hanging around me to my knowledge. Like I'm, I don't, I'm not talking you to them. <laughs> you do. You might not talk to them, but they're there. Right. Well, and I guess I shouldn't say I don't talk to them because I do. And that's just an enigma to me. Like I've had episodes about how do you talk to your angels and all that. And I do. Yeah. How come I don't feel it? Like, how come I don't feel that they're, I would be spooked if something showed up. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's the number one reason why, because you'd be spooked and they don't want to spook you. Number one. Number two, when we believe that that is something that is not available to us, like, oh, she can do it, but I can't, that puts up an energetic block between you actually receiving the information clearly. And then the third thing, which is what I see the most, is that people are so busy. So they get up in the morning, they're getting everybody ready for school, getting ready for work, drive to work, do your job. It's like, boom, 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 boom. There's no space for spirit to come in. They're probably right beside you saying, hey, Dawn, but you're so busy, (laughs) you don't notice. Right. And I try, I feel like I try, I don't know where, okay, so let's talk chakras because one of my first questions, besides what are they, which I want you to explain, like I'm in kindergarten, I want to know, like, how do you know if they're blocked or how do you know which ones are blocked? Okay, great question. So what are they? They are energy centers in our body. So chakras are actually really simple, really straightforward to understand. It's not this, you know, complex mystical Mm -hmm. um, concept. So just like we have a physical body, we have an energy body. And throughout our energy body, there's actually more than 300 chakras in our system. Oh, people don't talk about that. But we typically talk about the seven main chakras, right? That's what most people are familiar with. And so we have life force energy. It can be called prana, ki, chi, right? There's all these different words. It's just the energy that throws or sorry, flows through our body. And our chakras are those main energy centers that it flows through. So when we have a blocked chakra, that means that the energy is not able to freely flow through our body. 
Okay. That causes stagnation. And if not treated, will lead to things like physical pain, mental illness, disease, all those kinds of things. Okay. So how do you know, especially since there's 300 or more? Well, and I could not list off even a hundred of those. So <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not, not saying you, you got to learn them all. <laughs> <laughs> I could maybe oh, name 12 or so. <laughs> no. So if there are that many, how do yeah. you know which ones are blocked? So I typically work with the seven main ones as well okay. in my work, right. unless I'm guided to go elsewhere, which then I will. And how you know is going to be simply that something feels off. So if you're constantly getting migraines, well, maybe your third eye is blocked. Okay. If you're really having issues with your digestion, then you might want to look at your solar plexus. Right. If you're feeling really anxious and ungrounded, that's a root chakra issue. So you can know by either physical sensations, pain, heaviness, right, mm -hmm. discomfort. It can be by mental things. Things are off in your mind. Um, even spiritual things can come into play. So basically, when you feel like something is off, your energy body has an issue. It always shows up in the energy body before the physical body. Okay. So if it makes it to a physical complaint or an emotional, mental complaint, you know, there's a block in your energy body first and foremost. Okay. And it's something that you can fix yourself? In most cases. Yeah. So the thing with chakras and energy in general is it's just like taking care of your body. So most of us brush our teeth every day. Mm -hmm. We have a shower every day. We eat, we drink, we sleep. These are just things that are non-negotiables to keep ourselves healthy. Mm -hmm. The same is with energy. So you want to ground every day. You want to clear your energy every day. You want to set an intention for what you're open to, like energetic boundaries every day. And when you do this, it's harder for you to get out of alignment for those blocks to occur. Okay. okay? So the first thing I always recommend is energy hygiene. The second thing, you don't know about chakras, you don't know about energy. Now I've got a block. If you go and just start doing the regular practice, not going to cut it. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. So how you can do it yourself is a whole bunch of different ways. So everything is energy. Mm -hmm. Literally everything in our experience is energy. And you want to find an energy vibration that is going to open up that block. Okay. So one thing you can do is use sound. So you can use a singing bowl, you can use a drum, you can use your voice, sing a song, play an instrument with the intention to release that block. Okay. Right. If we take, let's say a guitar, for example, when you strum a guitar, literal sound vibrations are coming through the air. They're going to go into your body. Mm -hmm. Since music is a high vibrational frequency and pain, discomfort, disease is low vibrational frequencies, that higher vibrational frequency breaks up the low vibe. Okay. Makes sense, mm -hmm. which will start to release the block. So your energy can flow through you. You can do it with smoke, right? You can use sage incense is my favorite. You can light a candle. Um, you can use essential oils. Every single chakra has an essential oil that kind of, you know, can, or more than one essential oil mm -hmm. that can benefit it. You can use colors. A lot of us have seen those images Yep. Right, the rainbow colors, mm -hmm. the chakra system. So just for an example, the throat is blue. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a sore throat, you could eat some blueberries because they're blue. You could wrap a scarf, a blue scarf around your throat. I mean, honestly, I could go on forever about all the different ways, right. but it just said more than anything, it's setting the intention that you want to release the block okay. and then bringing in a positive vibration to kind of loosen that up. Okay. This is probably so dumb. How do no you dumb know? Question. How do you know <laughs> if it worked? Like, okay. You'll feel better. <laughs> Just your sore throat really? is gone. Yeah. And and if you feel it come on again, just chow down on some more blueberries. Yeah. And I mean, I'm making it really simplistic because you said Talk to yes. me like I'm a kindergartner, right? Yes, yes. There obviously are deeper layers to this and not everyone is going to experience the same thing. Sometimes when you get a sore throat, since we're talking about the throat, it's because you're not speaking your truth, right? Because mm -hmm. the throat chakra is all about communication. Right. And maybe you just have to have that difficult conversation with someone. 
your truth has been expressed, the block will go away. It won't come back. Mm -hmm. But if you're working on, let's say speaking your truth is a pattern throughout your entire life. You always avoid those difficult conversations. You're a bit of a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have an ancestral pattern of just whoop, zipping your lip and not saying anything. Right. Maybe there's a past life where you were literally killed for speaking up. Mm. Like there could be so many different layers to what it's contributing to that. Right. It's just, where would you like to go on the conversation? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. So I checked out your website, which I loved. Your Thank website you. is, it's, I don't want to say it's cute because that sounds really it's I'll take cute. cute. I liked it. I it was very Thanks. friendly. It was welcoming. Um, and I'm trying to I put it down somewhere. Mission. Well, I, I wanted you to walk me through the process of somebody goes to your page and they think she sounds like a cool chick. I want to I want to work with her. I want to see what she can do for me. So okay. not like you are a sideshow, but what can you do for people if they, if they seek you up? <laughs> I'm cool being a sideshow too. <laughs> really? You can't offend me. <laughs> I'm what are your tricks? <laughs> Let me get my bag. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically my mission in life and with this business is I really want everyone to be happy with being themselves. Mm-hmm. Like that's really what it all boils down to. And how I do that with people is through energy work, right? Releasing those blocks, making sure your chakras are open, um, working through childhood trauma, right? Or PTSD. And also really just learning, it sounds so cheesy, but to love yourself mm -hmm. as you are right now, flaws and all. That's my goal. Because I have found that when we can get to that place, everything else just becomes easier. Like it's not that all our problems go away or we never feel sick again, but the way that we can approach those challenges is lighter. It's more joyful with confidence that not only are we going to get through it, but we're going to get something positive out of it. Yeah. So that's my mission and how I do that. There's so many different ways to work with me because I believe that every person needs something different. Sure. Right. Like I don't right. follow a protocol because mm -hmm. what you need to get rid of your sore throat might be different than what I need to get rid of my sore throat. So I have things like healing meditations that you can download, workshops, courses. I have a community. That's probably my favorite place to spend time. Women only in the community. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and <laughs> They're probably not listening to this anyway. <laughs> no, they probably don't care. <laughs> and uh, in that, we go live once a week and we love each other. We support each other. We talk to our guides. We pull cards. We get messages. We do healing. It's basically just a really safe, sacred space to show up as yourself mm -hmm. and to figure all this stuff out. And then you can always book a one-on-one -on -one with me if you want some really, you know, soul shifting, big change in your life. I offer that as well. So it's a little bit of everything. Do you have to put people like under like hypnosis and stuff or is it just... I I don't. Um, I'm actually taking a hypnosis class right now because I'm always learning more. I love but that. I don't yet. I may change my mind. I change my mind a lot. But I want you to be present mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. The first one is that a lot of the times the problems we're experiencing is because we aren't willing to be present. We're pushing down. We're avoiding. We're ignoring. That's what's causing the disease in our body or the mental stress. So I want you to be present with whatever it is, mm -hmm. but I'll be there with you. You don't have to do it alone. Right? right. The second thing is that my main goal in working with someone isn't to fix them. I don't think people are broken. My main goal is to teach you how to help yourself. And if I put you under, you're not going to retain any of that. Right. Right. Is, is a lot of are a lot of the problems for people linked to past lives in your opinion or? So I would say the biggest challenge I have noticed, I've been doing this for about 12 years professionally. So I've seen a lot of people over the mm -hmm. years. It tends to be childhood trauma. Okay. And even with people who didn't have a big incident, who weren't abused, people who think, oh, I had a great childhood. There are things that inherently happen in families of origin 
even with the most loving, Mm well-intended parents, because of our society, because of how we are raised, that mess with us. Mm -hmm. And when that is not fully witnessed and embraced and loved, it, it gets into our heads and it creates these lifetime patterns that lead us to make choices that don't actually serve us. All our choices. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's it. So that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Cause I feel like I would, I would search somebody like you out just to find out what my purpose is. That's, you know, like when people are trying to find themselves in the sixties and the seventies or whatever, like that's what I wonder. Cause I, you never, I, well, maybe you do end up finding out. I I can tell you. (laughs) No, I can tell you right now, because that is the number one question I get asked. Yeah. And the answer is the same for every single one of us. Your purpose for being here in a human body is to have a human experience. That's it. Have some fun. Follow your joy. Do what makes you happy. Mess it up. Try again. That is literally the only reason that a soul comes into human form. And we have been told that we need a greater purpose than that. We have to help people. We have to change the world. We have to show up in these big, bold ways. And it's really doing us all a disservice. So what you're actually asking is what I would call a mission. What is my mission? Yes. Yes. Right. Right. So your purpose is to be you. If you're breathing, you are fulfilling your purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't look at our cat or our dog and go, are you fulfilling your purpose down there today? Like, <laughs> no, they're being a cat. They're sleeping. They're right. pooping. They're eating. Like, <laughs> they're being a cat. But we don't give ourselves the same grace. Right. Yeah, okay. true. So this is the first step is you have to embrace that you're exactly where you need to be right now, whatever it is you're doing. And then you can choose to have a mission, which is how do I take that essence that is me, what makes me happy, what really lights me up, and how do I extend that into the world mm-hmm. and it helps other people? Right. That's what I want to know. Yes. <laughs> that's so that I is different for every single one of us. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. so that's why I feel, because I, I, maybe I did have some trauma and I've blocked it out, but I really feel like I had a great childhood. I don't. And you I, can have a great childhood. Right. But still yeah. still have some trauma in there, right? Yeah. I just don't, I don't remember if I do or I don't feel that I do, but that's what, that's my thing. You know, you just want to feel like you're, you're not wasting time that you're doing what you're yeah. supposed to be doing. Exactly. Besides and just you having are. a good time. Yeah. But you are. And even if you are, let's say what really lights you up is eating Cheetos and playing video games. <laughs> if that's, that's what you're mission. doing with your life and you are happy with it, you don't need to do anything else to be of purpose, to be important or a value in this world Mm -hmm. because then what happens is let's say someone's having a really crappy day and maybe they're even thinking about taking their own life right and you're like dude just come over and play video games and that person comes over and sits next to you and your joy right and eats the cheetos right yeah has human connection without having to prove themselves without having to be or do anything they can just be themselves, right? That can shift the entire course of someone's life. Yeah. But we think it has to be the, I'm going to start a charity. I'm going to, you know, go and volunteer in Africa. Like we think it has to be these massive things, but if you make yourself happy and then you show up in the world with that vibration, it's going to ripple out and you're going to help people, whether you mean to or not. Oh, that's awesome. That's an awesome message. Sorry. I don't know if you can hear the sirens. We have volunteer fire. So they always go off when there's, well, hopefully there's not a fire. Um, What, tell me about the third eye. Okay. So the third eye is related to perception spiritually. So psychic gifts, clairvoyance, clairaudience, all that kind of stuff. Um, Physically, it's related to the brain, to the nervous system, to the eyes. Um, Yeah. So what specifically can I tell you about it? Is it something that everybody has and everybody can open? Yes. Okay. So I'm a big believer that everyone is an empath. Everyone is psychic. That is part of being human. I have yet to meet a single person that didn't have those gifts. 
Okay. Why is it that it's easier for some people to access them than, than so, others? Get it. A few reasons. One is if you weren't raised talking about it, practicing it. Mm -hmm. In fact, oftentimes we are raised being told not to trust it. Like if you go to your parents, a little kid's like, grandma came and visited me in my bedroom last night. And your parents are like, grandma's dead. That's not possible. You were just imagining it. Yeah. You don't trust yourself. But I believe grandma really was there. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is we get told not to trust that. Right. The second thing is practice like any skill. The more you practice it, the easier it becomes. And then the third is, I believe some people have stronger gifts. So I like to equate it to playing basketball. Right. With very few exceptions, every single person listening, if needed, could get a basketball into the net. Right. You might have to try a hundred times. Yeah. You might need a friend to lift you up, right? <laughs> like there's going to be different ways that we do that. Some people are going to walk out on the court, go without even thinking, land it the first time. Okay. We can all play basketball, but how it looks, how quickly it happens and the degree of effort is going to vary from person to person. Okay. So about you. Your spirit yes. guides that have been showing up around you since you were little, are yeah. they the same ones? Are they still around you? They left. They're very different for me. Um, so typically what I find is that we have different guides come in to support us with different things at different times. Okay. And they're not angels. For some people they are. Okay. I, I don't work with, for my clients, I work with angels. I don't work with angels for myself. It's just not a vibration that feels in alignment with me. I like working in the lower realms, in the dark, uh, with a lot of creatures and beings that most people would be afraid of. That's my jam. What? But, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? What? What? Yeah. Please elaborate. So, okay. So again, I feel it's a misconception. This is just my opinion that there is good and bad. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in good and evil. I don't believe in right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Those are just opinions, mm -hmm. right? If I came over to your house and I really wanted to bring in a beautiful gift and let's say I love, I don't know, lobster. <laughs> so I bring you over these beautiful lobsters thinking you're going to be thrilled and you're allergic to lobster. Okay. You're going to be like, that is the worst gift that you could have brought me. Right. It's not about the lobster. It's about how I relate to the lobster and how you relate to the lobster. Uh -huh. Okay. So I don't think that angels are good and demons are bad. Okay. I believe that all energy is neutral and how we engage and what is meant for us and how we utilize that energy dictates whether it's a positive or a negative experience. Okay. Um, does that make yeah, sense? Yes, it does. Thank you for explaining it like that. So what is it that you are doing with the darker, lower vibration. Yeah, I'm healing. Okay. See, this is this is a block that a lot of people have is they want to work with love and light. They want to work with angels and archangels and God right. and Jesus and Buddha and like all beautiful, amazing energies that I work with too. Okay. But that's not where your wounding is. Okay. Right? Okay. Your wounds, your darkness, your ugly, the stuff that we have to really get comfortable with in order to heal it, it's lower vibrations. Okay. It's the thick, heavy, sticky energy. So that's where you have to go to heal it. Wow. Right. I did not the, even think about it like that. And a lot of healers aren't willing to go there. And that's why the work that I do is very different from most healers, mm -hmm. because not only will I go there with you, because I'm very experienced in it, I know how to keep you safe. Did you have to learn it or did you learn it as you went along? I lived it. Really? <laughs> that's what happened is I lived it. I grew up in a very um, traumatic household. I had a lot of issues with drugs and alcohol as a teenager. I have been sexually assaulted. I have been abused. I have had near death experiences. Like I've just had one of those lives where it was like bad thing, bad, quote unquote, bad. We'll say challenging thing after challenging thing after challenging thing. 
and it's just where I lived. And so it's what I got comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned. And that's a big reason of why I do what I do, because I want you to learn from my mistakes. I want you to not have to go through all of that. Like I did. Wow. You've lived a lot of lives in this. I have. (laughs) Yes. Well, I'm sorry for the traumatic part of it, but the fact that you're taking it and turning it around and helping people, I mean, that's huge. I think that's what we all do though, in our own way. Right. And that's the whole part of embracing your purpose of being you. Right. And if like, Mm -hmm. let's say that's baking and then you share that with the world, you're going to help just as many people. It's just going to be a different way. So Mm -hmm. I work here because that's what I'm experienced in. That's where I'm comfortable. Um, Do you work with crystals? I do. Yeah. Do you feel like they are a big part or would that be an opinion too? Um, Absolutely. So I believe that every single healing modality has value and can be helpful. It's a matter of, is it of value and is it helpful to you right now where you currently are? So for me, crystals, I wouldn't say are a huge thing. I mean, I have them right here. I can show you many. (laughs) They're always close by. Yeah, I have some too. I've got a bunch and I charge them and stuff, but I don't know. I I feel like a bad person. I don't know if they're working. It's like, do something. (laughs) What are you doing? (laughs) That Oh. So that's selenite. Yes. Yeah. One of my faves. I've got one right here too. We're twins. Twins, twins. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, How do you know? If you are not noticing a difference, they're not working for you. Okay. So I have like 10 here and I also got the Moldavite. I got a little, you know, it was like on TikTok and I was like, what will it do? What will it do? And then I was scared of it too, you know? But yeah, I don't know what I'm wanting. I don't know what I'm wanting for them to do. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, it's just if you feel drawn to a crystal, this is what I always say to someone. If you want to get a crystal, go into a crystal shop, not knowing anything about the crystals, not even knowing what you need. Mm -hmm. Just walk in and notice where you're guided. The crystal that you need will call to you. Okay. But if you go, and I say this with so much love, but if you see something on TikTok and it's right. the end crystal and you buy it, chances are that's not what you need. Okay. Yes. I have gone and gotten ones that I was drawn to. I didn't feel a and vibration those are the ones when I held them. I didn't, yeah. Nothing, nothing happened. I just, well, this is pretty. I like this. And I get the card, you know, that comes yeah. with it. It's like, oh, it helps with this yeah. and this. Okay. Let's see what it does. Maybe it is doing something. I don't know. Well, if you think it's pretty and it brings you joy to look at it, then it's doing something for you. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Right? So when you said that, um, I could just pick your brain for like 10 hours. When you said (laughs) that you you do work with angels and and things like that, but that's not your jam necessarily. Your your jam is more working. I'll just point down here. Yeah. Um, So is that if people like me are like calling out, Hey, spirit guides, come visit me. Angels come visit. And it's just not seeming like it's connecting. Does that mean that's not for me and I should be trying something else? Or does it mean I need more practice? I would suggest if you want to have communication with your guides and your angels and it's not working, um, the best place to start is to invite them to tea like you would a friend. Okay. when I was trying to figure this stuff out, Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, Wednesday at three o'clock, I'm going to make a tea. I'm going to sit on the couch, maybe have a journal and a pen, maybe light a candle, maybe have some cards, you know, and I'd love for you to come and sit with me and just be open to what happens. Okay. Because like I said earlier, we're, we're busy, 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 busy. And like, my guys didn't give me any signs today. Well, like how open were you and how much space did you have to actually receive those signs? Because spirit comes in for the most part, very subtly. Okay. It's not like, Hey Dawn, like it's <laughs> going to be like this little tickle on your right ear lobe. And then you feel it again. Like it's going to be something really subtle okay. and you have to be open. You have to notice it. And then you have to get curious, like lean into it. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm super and, curious. Okay. <laughs> They're probably so, afraid of me. <laughs> no, impossible. So let's say you make the date, you're sitting there, nothing feels different. Just start writing or even ask a question. What is my next mission in life? Okay. Write that at the top of your journal and then just start doing automatic writing. You're not thinking, you're not trying to figure it out. You're just letting energy flow. Oftentimes your guides will come in and answer you through your writing. Okay. And when I do this, my writing changes. I know exactly when my guides came in. Really? That's yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. It's all so fascinating to me. And I think it's because it is such a huge mystery because I, as much as I want it, yeah. I, I just feel like, what, what am I doing? How am I blocking it? Why is it? But again, if I saw something, I would probably freak out. <laughs> And this is another thing to know that you can set the intention of how you want your guides to talk to you. So I remember I used to, I've always been able to feel them, hear them, that kind of stuff, but I never saw them like I see you. Mm -hmm. And when I was 32, it was like a light switch. And all of a sudden I could see all of them at like everyone's guides everywhere. And it was terrifying. Yes. And they love to come. Once spirit knows you can talk to them, they will want to talk to you, right? They want you to pass along their message. They want to help you. Like you will have no shortage of spirits wanting to talk. And they would always come to me at night because that's the only time I was not busy. Quiet. Right. right. I had little kids yeah. at the time, busy, busy. And they would wake me up and I'd be lying in my bed and I'd open my eyes and they'd be right here, <gasps> like right in front of my face. And they would always show up as they died. So bloody and sick and messy. Oh, and can you imagine? No. It was horrible. But what I didn't know, what I know now is I get to decide how I interact so first rule, you cannot come into my bedroom, period. I don't care what time of the day it is. Second of all, if you want me to see you, I want to see you at your best okay. when you felt amazing. I don't want to see you when you die, right? Yeah. And my third rule is one at a time. I don't want 300 in my backyard. Like that's when it first started happening. I'd look out my window and there'd be like 300 spirits out there. Oh my God. How did you know what to say? Or how to make it stop. I didn't. I fumbled and I oh. tried things and some worked and some didn't. And I reached out and asked for help. And I'm very blessed that I have a lot of very intuitive, connected friends as well. Mm -hmm. And so together, we've really figured a lot out. Like, does this happen for you? Yeah, that happens for me. What happens when you do this? So okay. I had, you know, support around me to kind of figure things out, but mostly trial and error. That's yeah, fascinating. And again, that's why I, I teach this stuff now, because I don't want you to have to go through that where yeah. I can just tell you, set your intention, make it really clear. This, these are my rules. They will follow them. Is it, I know I've asked this on so many other episodes. Are you, are your spirit guides the same as your ancestors or is that a whole other person or entity to contact a, so it can be the same and it can be different and that can and will change throughout your lifetime. Okay. So when spirit, I first started seeing spirit, that episode I'm talking about, my ancestors were a massive help in that. I don't work with them a whole lot right now, mm -hmm. but again, it's who I need at what time is who comes in to support me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely am a believer. I just feel like I just am waiting, just waiting. Like it'll, I don't, I keep asking. Um, I, my dad passed and I um, asked him on Monday, I was like, dad, send me a cardinal, but don't just send me a cardinal. Like you have to make it obvious. Like I want it dancing yeah. in the yard or doing something. Monday came, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. Today, I was getting ready to leave the house, was getting my shoes on. I heard bam against the glass. Oh. And I went outside and, or I looked outside and there was a blue jay and a cardinal that were fighting over the bird bath. And the cardinal was bounce, 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 bouncing all around the bird bath. And <laughs> Dancing. I was like, thanks dad. <laughs> like I felt so yeah. validated and it felt so good. And I thought, do it again, do it again. You know, it's like, I love seeing the confirmation and I yes. know that they have their signs and times that they'll come. But yeah, I don't, maybe it's just, I don't know what I'm expecting. And so they are tickling and I don't, 
register yeah. is not grand enough, you know, but I don't want That's, blood and guts. <laughs> but then again, you just say, I don't want blood and guts. I don't want this. Like even just start with your dad. Yeah. For now, I just want to talk to dad. Yeah. Oh, and I do. Right. And so, yeah. and you know, clearly he's around you. Clearly he also wants to communicate. So start there, ask him to come through when you journal. Okay. Right? And another beautiful practice you can do is just sit by yourself in a space that has as little sensory input as possible. Okay. So like no candles, no bright lights. Don't sit beside a vent where air is coming. Like just sit in nothingness yeah. and just notice what it feels like to be in your own energy. Okay. Ooh, I just got chills around this. This is really going to work for you. They're saying, Oh, um, invite dad to come in. Okay. Notice what changes. Okay. Right. Yeah. So maybe you're going to feel something. Maybe you're going to think all of a sudden have a memory. Maybe it's going to be, uh, you know, again, the tickle on your ear. Maybe it's going to be a song that pops into your head, but something is going to change. Okay. And that'll be dad's calling card. Okay. So then let's say it's a song. Immediately you think of some song. And then next time you're driving in the car and the song comes on, you're going to be like, dad's here. Right. Or she wouldn't have known before. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Yep. It does. A hundred percent. That's another, another activity that you can try. That's awesome. You're amazing. I love how just because of all the experiences you've had, it helps you help other people, you know, just, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I know how to fix that. I know how to do that. That's awesome. People have yeah. to just be, feel amazing after they're done with sessions with you. Sometimes, I mean, I'm not going to lie. A lot of the time. Yes. Sometimes you feel like a bag of poo, because we have to work through again, that darker, icky, uncomfortable stuff to get to the gold. That's why I call myself an energy alchemist. We take what is lead, what is heavy, what is dark, and we transmute it into something shiny and valuable, right? So sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. Yeah. How do you not let it all take up your energy how do you clear it does up? right <laughs> it does right. so i have very clear boundaries i only take two private sessions per day That's if i take a lot if i take more than that i get physically ill and i have again i, I don't take clients after hours if someone is asking me for something and i know they need it and i want to give it but it's going to put me over capacity i have to say no yeah Right. I just, I've, after doing this for so long, I now know my line, my boundary of where I can show up and I can give and not deplete myself. Right. And I just can't cross that line. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have boundaries too, for yeah. your own sake. So what's next for you? Are you going to write a book or are you oh going gonna... to, I don't, I have four books in my brain, <laughs> but wow. I don't think I'll ever write them if I'm being totally honest. What's next for me, what I have really been loving for myself, I always try things on myself and my family first before I put it out <laughs> into the world for obvious reasons. Right. A couple of years ago, I was really drawn to medicinal herbs. Yeah. So I created an organic garden in my backyard and I have grown all these beautiful herbs and I've made them into essences. Mm-hmm. And so I am learning how to help people heal using plant essences. I love that. I have not done that as a podcast topic yet, but I have wanted to, because I yeah. find all of that, you know, whether it's Chinese medicine or Indian, you know, Native American medicine, yeah. I find all of that. So, I mean, they thrived on that for centuries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, we all did. If we go back to our original ancestors, right? right we right. all lived off the land at some point. Yeah. And just become so far removed from that, that we think we need something outside of ourselves, outside of nature, which is what we are. We are nature. We're like the fox in the woods. We're like the tree, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I have discovered, the more I just follow my curiosity, right? So the more I go down this path, the more I realize we need very little to thrive. Yeah. Right. And I could take, say, a pharmaceutical if I have a headache and I'm not against them. I'm truly yeah. grateful for them because sometimes we really need them. But if I were to do that, I am taking something that is so 
away from its natural source, mm -hmm. right? It's been processed. And whenever something is processed, what we often forget, it's handled by people. Yeah. And like I said at the beginning, everything is energy. The plant is energy. The people who pick it is energy. The person who drives the truck and unloads it at the pharmaceutical company is energy. Mm -hmm. The machines it goes through is energy. You can see how it gets transmuted and changed. So yeah. the end product is so far from the medicine. Yeah. So now I literally walk into my backyard and I have the medicine. It's pure. It's not tainted. That's the way that I'm learning to heal now. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. I yeah. love that. So you really do just kind of follow your gut and just whatever Always. you're most interested in your hunch that yeah. you're like, okay, let's go there. Yeah. Let's try my that. career is like, vroom, vroom, vroom. I cannot tell you in five years what I'll be doing. I know I'll be helping people, right? Yeah. I know I'll be doing that because that's what has always lit me up from the time I was a little kid. Um, but how? No idea. Wow. So these essences that you're making, are you going mm -hmm. to sell them or you're going to use not them sure. on your clients? Okay. I'm not sure. I have okay. actually have one here. Again, I'm my own guinea pig. My kids love them too. I really need to understand the plants better. Mm -hmm. right and how they work in conjunction with how I've made them because my energy is in my plant essences sure. right yeah it can't yep. not be so I'm just trying to really figure out how to best use them and then we'll see maybe I'll do it for clients maybe it'll be just something for friends and family I haven't decided yeah it's super interesting so maybe we'll talk about that another time because I maybe. do I, yeah <laughs> yeah I find that fascinating and it seems like the more people I talk to they are kind of going back to the psychedelic type of medicine to help people through trauma and PTSD and things like that you know um what do I want to say? Guided, you know, it's not just free for all. <laughs> yeah. Here's some, you know, LSD. It's not like that, but it's, you know, where they nurses and functional medicine is starting to kind of go that way. I have an opinion on that. Let's hear it. I'm not, not a big fan. Okay. Tell me why. And, um, because when we are trying to heal trauma, the root problem is a dysregulated nervous system. So either you're stuck in activation or you're in freeze mode. And when we take something that is very potent, mm -hmm. like psilocybin, like the ketamine, ayahuasca, you know, whatever yes. drug we're talking about, that is a shock to the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And if you are not already regulated, that can actually cause more trauma. Wow. Now, in some cases, there are people who actually know how to do this. Mm -hmm. In my research and experience, they are very few and far between. And I have found that slower, gentler methods are what lead to long-term sustainable healing okay. versus feeling better for the weekend and then going right back into all of your... Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I... I I always like to hear other people's opinions. I think yeah, that's the too. only way we get smarter, <laughs> you know, is or yeah. you know, more educated. It's better than walking around thinking we know everything. Yeah, yeah. that definitely makes sense. And it sounds like there's so many people whose nervous systems are a wreck. Most of us, again, the way we live in our current society, mm -hmm. it's really, really hard not to get dysregulated. Right, right. It's not that anybody's doing something wrong. It's just where we are collectively. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything that makes us feel lighter and better and love ourselves yes. more and talk nicer yes. to ourselves is the best, best thing ever. Totally Melanie, agree. I have just loved talking to you. This has just been oh, great. I'm you. so glad that we got to connect. And if you ever want to come back, I'm yeah, come on back. I'd love to talk oh, to thank you more. You. Yeah. I would love to as well. All right. Well, um, tell people how they can find you. Sorry. I almost forgot. That. Oh, no, not a problem at all. So I am at melaniehustis.com. That's my website. And I hang out on Instagram at Melanie Hustis. YouTube at Melanie Hustis, Pinterest at Melanie Hustis. All right. The rare name. I think there's only three of us in the whole planet that I've ever found. Oh my gosh. So I'm an easy girl to track down. 
<laughs> well, and I'll put it all in the show notes too, but yes, Thank go you. to her website. Her website is super uh, friendly and welcoming. And I just loved it. I, I don't have my readers. So whatever I wrote, about it, I just remember I really liked it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Uh, take care and I'll be in touch soon. Sounds good. All right. Bye-bye.